Welcome to our Hot Monthly Hot Topic Show. We are here in our s studio at the Prescott Valley Chamber with Mark from the town of Prescott Valley comes over and does this for us and runs it on, on the town website for us uh, for a month. And so we love the fact that we can partner with them and get some exposure for um, some people that have some really good events going on. So I'm Gloria Gross. I'm the operations and events manager here and I'll be doing the show today. Your host, your MC, Marnie is out of town at a conference in Disneyland, no less. She goes there every year because I look back and every February I do this show because she's always over there. So anyway, <clears throat> welcome and we're so glad you're here. Uh, we have some great guests today and I want to invite up Katherine Anderson, our first guest from Yavapai College. Gloria, thank you for letting me be here today. I am Katherine Anderson. I am a program specialist with the Yavapai College Regional Economic Development Center and Small Business Development Center. Nice long title. I am here today to share some information with you about our upcoming spring entrepreneur workshops. And we do have a lot uh, that we're going to be offering this spring and throughout the year. And I always recommend everybody to just check our website constantly. Go on at least twice a month because we're always adding classes, always maybe changing the dates <laughs> or location because we're all it's ever evolving if someone comes to us and says hey I got a great new idea or have you thought about this we're like yes that's a great idea so always change or always go back and check our website which is www.yc.edu slash sbdc and just click on the link for classes we offer them countywide uh, since we do Gavapai College does serve the entire county so we have classes in Prescott Valley, Prescott, uh, the Verde Valley, Camp Verde, Sedona, all over the place and we offer many of our classes online because we do know that you know our instructor may be located in Prescott Valley and can't offer a class up in Sedona but we have someone in Sedona that it's like, oh my gosh, I need that. I need that particular assistance. So we want to make sure that we can reach everybody. So some of the classes we're going to be offering uh, this year, and this is just a taste because, like I said, it's always changing. We're always evolving our schedule. Uh, some of them are Lean Processes Workshop, which I'm going to go into a little bit more in depth in a minute, Social Media Marketing, an Employment Law Series, You Can Do Business with Yavapai College and Beyond, which again, I'll go into more information. Is your business profitable? Which is going to go into cash flow. A moonshot pioneer pitch event, which is very similar to Shark Tank. So if you're interested in Shark Tank, if you've never heard of Shark Tank, again, go check out our website to find out more information about that. And uh, again, lean processes, cash flow. We are, like I said, constantly evolving check back. So a couple of them that in particular I wanted to talk about was the, I'm going to go through the paperwork here, the Lean Processes Workshop, which we're offering on February 12th here in Prescott Valley. Gloria's very happy about that. She's clapping in the background. <laughs> At our campus over on Glassford Hill, we just moved our main office over into the Prescott Valley Center. We used to be located in Prescott, but I know we've made our Prescott Valley neighbors very happy when we relocated. But again, we do serve the entire county. So our Lean Processes Workshop is for business owners and their team. And this is going to be conducted by Jim Godfrey. He has over 35 years in high-tech manufacturing experience as both an engineer and a manufacturing manager. So the basics of this class is to learn the lean principles to improve your organization's operations throughout your company. It's a four hour workshop where you will learn hands on to identify areas of waste and or improvement that you can put into action immediately. So if you're you know, sitting there at work and going, mm, you know, would this work for us? Well, let me identify a few more things about it. You're going to learn lean definitions such as lead time, cycle time, value added versus non-value added, the eight waste or eight wastes, selected tools from the house of lean such as standard work, visual control, pull, Kanban, uh, and then they're going to do hands-on simul simul simulation. Ah tongue-tied there, using Legos. So I know for many in the manufacturing world, this sounds very familiar. To me, I'll admit, 
just over my head. But <laughs> many people have heard of this. It's a great opportunity. Uh, it's $50 per person, but if you are bringing two or more people from the same company, it's only $30 per person. This is actually a, a great bargain if you're aware of lean processes and just how much these classes can cost. It's again, it's February 12th. It's 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., and this particular one's going to be offered at our Prescott Valley location. We are going to be offering this four times this year at Prescott, Prescott Valley, and two up in the uh, Verde Valley area. So check out our calendar for all the dates. Another one I want to focus on is the you can, you can do business with Yavapai College and beyond. This is the first time we have held such a one day conference as this and it's got two different tracks that are involved with it. The first half is the you can do business with Yavapai College part. It is going to run from 8.30 to 11 a.m. and that is going to go over the process and procedures for actually doing business with the college. It's going to go over the policies and procedures for thresholds, how mail uh, delivery and pr print services work, how the business office procedures work. So if you're a vendor in the area that's interested in doing business with the college, this is the morning for you. This is how you can find out. So I want to do business with the college. What is involved how much can I do business with them before I have to actually become a, a vendor where it's going to be 5000 and over and i got to go through that process to find out, you know, that has to go out to bid, let's say, because over a certain dollar amount, things have to go out to bid. It's not just a matter of writing a check or, or pulling out the credit card. So that would be the morning half. And then the afternoon half is the and beyond. We're bringing an Danny Ayala from the PTAC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center, and he's going to go over government contracting. So many people think of government contracting as just federal, and government contracting is state, county, uh, what am I missing? <laughs> Local. <laughs> it could even be dealing with schools. It could be dealing with Prescott Valley, who's one of our guests that will be coming up. Uh, government contracting could be a, a local agency deciding they don't want to be doing the facilities and housekeeping themselves and hiring a local housekeeping company to come in and, and do it for them. So you might be thinking, well, I don't have a business that relates to government contracting. You don't know that. It could be selling trinkets at the Grand Canyon. That's federal contracting because the Grand Canyon's a national park. Or like I said, doing housekeeping for a local government agency. So this would be a great av uh, afternoon session to find out the who, the what, the when, and the why of government contracting. To find out more information for this conference, you can go to www, I'll make sure I read this the right way, .yc.edu, you can conference. And for any of this information, you can also call me. My number is 928-776-2008, and I'm at Yavapai College, and my name is Katherine Anderson, and I am the program specialist. And any other questions, Gloria? Yes, I know that was a lot of information, but I had a lot to share. <laughs> so I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. There's always so much going on at the college, so be sure you go to their website and check out all the uh, great classes that they have going on. I know my husband wanted to sign up for one of the Korean cooking classes. Well, he waited too long, and it was full, so he couldn't do it. It's his own fault. Our next guest is... Uh, Cody Rose with the Firefighter Angel Foundation. Cody, come up and tell us what's new over there. Hi, I'm Cody Rose with the Firefighter Angel Foundation. I'll tell you a little bit about the foundation, and then we'll talk about some of the events that we have coming up. Um, so I started with the Chino Valley Fire District in 2002. And in 2008, while I was there, one of the local friend of ours came by and asked uh, a question if we could help somebody out that was having some difficulties during the Christmas season. This happened to be somewhere around October and she said there was a, a family that was well known in the community. The, the father was very well known and he'd recently diagnosed with terminal cancer. Um, they didn't think he would live till Christmas and he was the sole provider of the family and he want, she wanted to know if there's anything we could do for that family for this Christmas just to make it a little bit better with the news that they recently had. Uh, there was three kids in the household. The oldest was uh, the daughter that was eight years old, and then they had uh, an infant that was between six and eight months old at that time. So 
Um, a lot of a lot on their hands, a lot on their plate, and then not very much money to deal with that because he obviously can't work anymore. So um, I told her we'll do something. I don't know what we'll do, but we'll figure it out and we'll do something. We um, I talked with some of the other firefighters that I worked with and said, hey, this is what's going on. You guys have any ideas what we can do? Uh, everybody came forward. Everybody said, yes, we're, we'll help them out. One of the guys said, I'll dress up as Santa. Um, some of our dispatchers came out and were our elves. We put them on the fire truck, went out there at night, delivered some of the gifts that we went and got for them. And that expanded from there. People uh, found out about it. It was currently the Prescott uh, Sheriff's Posse. We knew some of the people that were on that, and they said, we want you to continue to do this. We're going to give you $1,000 every year to continue to do this. So we did that for a couple more years, and then we we started having lots of people call us and say, I want to be part of this program. I want to be part of this program. So we had to figure out how are we going to uh, narrow this down so that we get the right people when we're doing this for Christmas time. So we partnered with the school districts and um, go through the nurses at the schools who see these kids on a regular basis and know w what's the kids that need um, the stuff at that time. Um, so with that, we started delivering to all the schools in Chino Valley, including uh, Mingus Springs Charter School and Paulden Elementary School. Um, did that for another three or four years, and then Prescott Valley uh, firefighters and police officers were asking, can you bring that here? So we went and met with some of the people in, at Humboldt School District and partnered with them. Now we now we serve them as well. And then this last year was the first year that we do that with um, Prescott School District. So with that, as it's growing... Um, the foundation obviously has to have funds to support that. So this comes from sponsors. It comes from local businesses. We've gotten a lot of those come through, but we want to continue to grow that. So some of that stuff has to continue to grow. Um, last year, with the, this past December, with the Christmas part of the program, we served 24 families. and ended up being about 90 kids. That went from Mayor to Prescott Valley to Chino to Paulden, Prescott, and to Wilhoyt. Uh, we hope to continue to expand that throughout the years and serve as many kids as we possibly can in this uh, local area. Some of the other things that the foundation does, uh, we do a back to school drive that's partnered with Humboldt School District and Chino Valley School District. And again, that's coming up this year with Prescott School District. Um, we get, we do a fill the bus thing. We did it at Stone Ridge this year, as well as Safeway. And we're going to do it, I believe it's going to be at the Walmart on Gale Gardner in Prescott. So we're going to do that this year. We'll do it all at the same time. And um, all that stuff will, will come back with the schools. We'll get backpacks, we'll stuff all the backpacks, and then we'll do a backpack giveaway that we'll schedule before school starts. Um, upcoming events, we have on April 28th, Pancake Breakfast, one of the fundraisers that we do for the foundation. April 28th from 8 to noon, we're going to have three locations this year. The location in Prescott Valley will be at the uh, Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority Training Center, which is right next to the H Distribution Center on Valley Road. Uh, we'll have it in Chino Valley at Station 61, which is on 3 North, just down the road from the McDonald's there. And then we'll do it at Station 71 in Prescott, which is off of White Spar. Um, those will all be on the same day, same time. Uh, very fun event for the kids. It's a $5 donation. Um, all that money goes back to the foundation, ultimately back to the kids. Um, we do a little competition just being firefighters and police officers because we will both work together in doing that, that which place can make the most money. We talked with Marnie about that the other day, and Marnie said she's going to make sure that Prescott Valley makes the most money. So we'll see. We'll see because people in Prescott are saying different and people in Cheetah are saying different. So we'll see. But it's a fun event that we have lots of stuff for the kids to do. There will be face painters. There will be balloons. There will be uh, bounce houses. There will be lots of stuff for the kids to do and the family. So just come out for a fun time. We'll have the fire trucks there. You can walk through the fire trucks and the fire stations and just have a fun time. Um, the other big event will be on May 18th. That's our Gear Up Car Show at Stone Ridge. Um, this will be the third year we're doing that. That continues to grow. Uh, the partnership with Stone Ridge has continued. Uh, we started that. Like I said, th uh, been three years ago and parked on the grass there, and that was our big thing that the cars get to park on the grass. Um, Stone Ridge has continued to have more and more buy-in with it. This year, we're going to be able to shut down the whole entire driving green, uh, driving range, which is a big deal for Stone Ridge because that's money that they're not going to be able to get for that time frame. But uh, Dave, Dave over there has been very, very great and very gracious to allow us to do that stuff. So. Uh, that's a good time as well. We have a huge, huge uh, kids area there that will be actually on the, dr the driving range that will have multiple bounce houses. We'll have slides. There'll be water. There'll be uh, 
ho- hose dragon events. There'll be fire, just firefighter events that the kids can do. There'll be face painters, balloon twisters, um, lots of lots of stuff for the kids to do, as well as uh, cars. Last year we had 90 cars. We're expecting to have between 100 and 150 cars this year. We have lots of people already wanting to sign up. We haven't got that far yet, but they're wanting to sign up. So. It's uh, it's a it's a really fun event. Um, with that, we have three categories for the cars. We have a, a chief's choice. We have the fire chiefs and police chiefs from uh, Prescott Valley, Chino Valley, and Prescott. They come out and they judge cars. We have a people's choice. So all the spectators that come, we give them a, a token, and they get to write on the back of it which car they like. They submit that. And then our third one is be the professional's choice. So we have some... So people from the area that are very well well uh, known and know cars very, very well that they'll judge for us. So those three, and they get awards for that, and we do that. There'll be food there as well that from provided by Stone Ridge. So that'll be a fun event. So of those, those, those are fundraising events. We hope that you come out to see those. And if you have any questions, feel free to visit our website. It's www.firefighterangel.org or on Facebook at Firefighter Angel Foundation. And you can contact me if you want to. I'm the executive director, Cody Rose, 928-533-3341. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. I know at our Prescott Valley Early Bird Lions Club, we committed to help him uh, with the breakfast out here in Prescott Valley. So we're going to make this thing, and we're going to win. So... <laughs> we got to win, huh, Cody? And I know you had told us, because you were at, at our Lions Club, that this is a continual thing now. You're accepting gifts, not gifts, but um, toys and things for people all year long, not just at Christmas now, because you've had so much response from the community that you're trying to just make it bigger and better every year. and. Um, you know, it's a great event. Uh, I know uh, several years ago, our daughter had lost her job and she was really having some financial difficulties. And this school called her and said, Would, could you use some help for Christmas? And she said, yes, I could. And so it was so neat to see the kids bring home these big bags of there's clothes and, you know, a toy or, or something small, but mainly clothes, coats and stuff like that that came from, I don't know if it was you guys or who it came from, but um, it was amazing. And she was very appreciative because, you know, without a job, you don't have any income and living with mom and dad isn't helping very much. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but it was, it, it helped. Now she's on her own. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, from the town of Prescott Valley, Deputy Town Manager Ryan Judy talking about our Citizen Academy. Okay. Thank you, Gloria. How's everybody out there in Prescott Valley land? So it's a pleasure to be with you once again. So I'll talk to you uh, about the Citizens Academy. So this is a program the town has actually had in place for going on 13 years now. And I'll give you some of the history about it. Back in 2006, I was tasked with putting this program together about citizens interacting with their local government and council members and I was a little worried that I'd be able to find enough people to be interested to, uh, to make the class work. But we sent out applications in our utility bills which went out to you know 15,000 plus people at the time and that first year I got over 100 applications back in the mail. So that first year we held a class in the springtime, we had one in the summer, we had two in the fall, we were going, 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 and since then we've averaged about two per year. So what it is, it's a 10-week course, typically held on Wednesday nights, and uh, each night we have a separate topic where we talk about uh, things that are really important to residents of Prescott Valley. So one night we have a topic of public safety where we invite in the police chief and the fire chief to come in to talk about things that are impacting their departments or their agencies. We have an economic development. The Prescott Lake Chamber of Commerce participates that night where they talk about their efforts in business retention and how they're supporting our local businesses. We bring in the Prescott Valley Economic Development Foundation where they talk about recruiting uh, industrial jobs to the area. And we have our own Ben Hooper that talks about retail. Everybody always wants to know who's, uh, who's coming to Prescott Valley. So we're glad to say that we have Dunkin' Donuts under construction and Mod Pizza we're looking to add to our uh, inventory of restaurants there. A lot of people are excited for that. And people are, are curious. They want to know what's going on. You know, we have three big box stores that have been vacant. Well, two of those are being filled now. So we have 
furniture, Pruitt's Furniture going into the old Kmart building. We have Heights Church going into the Albertsons. Um, now they're working on the Sam's Club building and Walmart, Walmart's aggressively marketing that building. So those are kind of some of the things that you learn that night. Uh, we have one night that's all about water. You know, how many people have heard that we're running out of water? Well, come to that night and you'll learn all about the science of it, about our water resources and how we deliver the water to your homes and take your wastewater out of your homes and treat that and clean it up and recharge it back into our aquifer. So again, each night we're talking about different topics. And the best part about the program is it's free. And on top of that, we feed you. So that's uh, one incentive that we give people to, to come. And we hold it in the evenings and we, we start at 5.30. So that's another reason why we provide food is we want people that are working they can come straight to the library where we hold the classes and uh, they can participate without having to run home to worry about you know taking care of the kids or making dinner they can just come straight to the uh, the class so over the almost 13 years that we've had this program now we've serviced uh, over 600 residents of the town that have gone through the program the class is average in size about 30 people and it's been so popular that it's now being emulated by nearly every community in the quad city area Chino Valley started their Citizens Academy patterned after ours. Yavapai County has done the same thing. City of Prescott just started their own Citizens Academy this past year. So it's been a very popular program for, for residents of the area, and we're excited to see that expanding now out into the other communities. And now we're actually on a waiting list. So if you're watching this program, this class is nearly full already if it's not over. What we'll do is we'll put you on a wait list for the next class, which will start in the fall so even if the class is full now you know get your applications in because what i'll do is i'll put you on that wait list for the next class we have this continual list that's that's running from from year to year we try to get it, as many people as we can in but it has been a popular program so we're glad to see it continue and did i mention it's free <laughs> f-r-e-e -E, our favorite four-letter word in the town so we're happy to offer that again so yes gloria it's held in the Prescott Lake Public Library in what we call the Crystal Room. That's the third floor. That's the only room that's on that floor, so it's hard to get lost. You take the elevator up to the third floor, and, and we're there. It's a great room. It's got some kitchen facilities. We end up setting the class in a horseshoe pattern so that when we're presenting and talking to people, you know, the participants can actually see each other and communicate and talk about their ideas. The final night is one of our favorite classes. You know, I've, I've heard the same presentation. This will be our 26th class. But the last night is different for me, and it's, it's different every, every class because what we do is we have a roundtable discussion where we kind of zip our lips and don't say anything, and we want to hear from residents what's important to them, what things are the town doing well, what are we doing poorly. And it's fascinating to hear that discussion. And after, we've, after they've footed their ideas, things they'd like to change or for us to, to implement, we write all these things down on a, on a whiteboard or on, on big post-it notes that are, are that big. And then we give everybody three dots. And so everybody can go up and they can vote on their, their favorite topics. And so then we select the top three. And if there's time, we talk about them. But every class, again, over the past 13 years, every class has had something different. They've had a different top three priorities. And sometimes it's, it depends on what's happening in the economy. During the recession, the biggest thing was, was jobs. Uh, we've heard a lot about, you know, uh, beautifying Prescott Valley, and we've heard things about a post office and more doctors, and there's, there's lots of things that people have implemented that we, or suggested that we try to, to implement and, uh, and help, so, yeah. When's the next class start? The next class starts March 20th. Can I still register? You can still register, again, if it's full, then we will put you on the wait list. And can it, I register? You can come to the town's website at www.pvaz.net. You can email me at rjudy at pvaz.net. That's r-j-u-d-y at pvaz.net. You can call me at 928-759-3104. And I'm happy to answer any questions you've got or send you the application through email. And you can also go, you know, online. You can, you don't have to submit a, a paper copy like we've got here. You can submit it digitally through the town's website. So we offer multiple platforms for you to uh, to sign up. Any other questions for me? And Gloria's been through the program. I've been through the program. 
as has Bill uh, back yes, there, yes. and Marnie's been through the program. Brady's so. been through the program, Brady. so we've all been through the program. <laughs> you it's, like our chamber great. supporters. <laughs> yes, it's a great program. Thank you so much. Thank we you, appreciate Gloria. you being here and telling us about that because it was a good program, and we really did enjoy it. Of course, the food is the highlight of the night. I mean, you get to eat, and they go to different restaurants, and um, – and we emulated that with our business academy. And so we started a business academy doing the same thing, only for businesses like uh, Business 101, Finance 101, and marketing, and all the different areas that we can help our members in the chamber. So we started a business academy doing the same thing. We give them free dinner, which is nice. And we've had a great turnout with that. This is our, oh, I can't remember how long we've been doing it, five or six years at least. But it's a great program. And, you know, just like we got it from you, it's called um, Rip Off and Duplicate in our business. <laughs> we do that quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. If you have a chance and you can get into this class, be sure and do it. It's a, it's a great class. And you will learn more about your town than you ever thought you could know and stuff that you wanted to know. So thank you so much for being here, everybody, and for being with, on our February heart, heart, blah, 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 heart, heart Topics. Hot Topics. Heart topics. This is Heart Month, isn't it? I put that on my little thing, my little paper here. There's a heart down here, but uh, it is heart, considered Heart Month for February. So thank you for being here. We appreciate all of you, and we look forward to seeing you next month when we'll be back in March for St. Patrick's Day. So we look forward to seeing you then, and happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Bye.